Hello, everyone. I am here with Hannah, who is a business alignment coach. And I think that that means that she helps you align your business with who you are and who you want to be as a, yeah. as a human being. Am I right about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so many people, especially women, like we do what we think we're supposed to do and not what we actually want to do or what like is actually, you know, our calling. Um, so I help women figure out what that is to create a business that really lights them up. So then they can like withstand the pressure of business. Cause as you know, business is no joke. <laughs> and yeah, and if, if you're not into it, if you don't love it, you're it's, it's, just not going to be sustainable. That is so true. <laughs> yes. And it's hard to figure out what your calling is because yeah. you know, through so many messages from all the forces around you. Yeah. Well, and there's so many people telling you the do's and don'ts of business, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. business has become this very male dominated industry and this is how it's supposed to be done, but that's not necessarily the case. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to run a business and it's statistically proven that when women run businesses, the world is literally a better place. <laughs> so I'm on this mission to get more women business owners um, in those positions of leadership and power because then we'll just be better for it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I like the variety of styles like there isn't one right way there's you know you can no, I, do things your own way try things out see what works as long as you're you know being honest and ethical yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly and that's that's the issue is you know we're taught like we're supposed to do business in this way where it's you know working 60 70 hours a week and like you have to sell 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 or you have to share a message this way or whatever but there are so many business women out there who go with the flow of their schedule, you know, or they um, go with the flow of the their energy. <laughs> like, you know, we have families or spouses or households to run too, and it's just not feasible to, you know, potentially homeschool. I mean, maybe they're homeschooling kids. Like, how are you going to work 60 hours a week and homeschool your kids? Like, that's just not, that's, makes you miserable. And then of course, at the end of the day, when you're worn out and burnt out, what goes on the back burner, your business does because your kids are a priority. So I just help women find that balance of, okay, this is what I'm really good at. This is what I love doing or talking about. This is what I'm passionate on. And this is the time I have or the energy I have. So what can we do with it? <laughs> and um, I just help them. And a lot of my clients already have a business idea or already have a business started, but it's like, I'm a photographer, but I really don't like working. I really don't like doing like holiday family pictures because the kids are crying and the parents are a mess or whatever, you right. know? And no. yeah, then don't do that. Like you can still be a photographer. There's a million different ways to be a photographer. And so just helping, you know, women find that balance because business is supposed to be, in my opinion, like if you own a business, you're supposed to love it and enjoy it. And it's supposed to light you up and you're supposed to have a really good time doing it. But if it's always, always bringing you down and stressing you out and you're dreading having to make that phone call or write that email or whatever, then it's, you're, it's not going to be successful because you're putting a negative in, energy into it. That's just, like not going to come back to you. Yeah, I think that dread <laughs> is a really good indicator that you're not on the right path. Cause I know I felt that in my like regular normal quote unquote jobs, uh, you know, I would reach yeah. a point where every Monday morning I'm feeling so much dread and anxiety yep. and I don't have that now, even though I work very hard in my business, I wake up every day really excited to dive back into it. So exactly, yeah. exactly. And yeah, that dread is not a good place to be. And if you start feeling resentful toward your business because it's bringing up whatever feelings, like, you know, you have to work through those. And of course, like I said, business is hard. There's going to be ups and downs. Like I'm not, you know, I always make it clear. I'm not saying it's always going to be fun and easy, but like you want to do your best to make it as easy <laughs> and as fun as possible. So that I think you the actually, hard times are worth yeah. it when you're, when you're exactly. in the right place, then yeah, exactly. When you're in you alignment, know. the hard times, it, it's a, um, it's a motivator, like it propels you forward instead of 
like making you just want to throw the towel in. <laughs> so <laughs> you found that you're able to be successful without hustle, hustle, hustle all the time. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I focus a lot of my business is on my personal growth and my personal learning. So I spend about 50, 50 amount of my time doing my own growth with my own courses, my own um, coach or well, coaches. And um, I just, I find that when I'm the type of student and when I'm the type of client that I want, then those are the women that come into my space. Um, and so it's just all about being your own ideal client is, is what I believe. And of course, you're going to be a couple steps ahead of, and it, I mean, it depends what industry you're in too. This is for the coaching industry, but you know, when you're coaching someone, you're just a few steps ahead of them, but so you can still relate to where they're at and you can still, you know, be the same, be the same client that you want to attract. And mm -hmm. that's what I focus on doing. You know, I know that for me, my growth and my healing and my um, learning is priority priority for me. And I want it to be for my students too, because in my clients, I call, I go back and forth between students and clients because we're <laughs> always learning. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's such a beautiful journey to be, to be able to have that, um, that flexibility and to really be passionate. I think it's, like I wake up every day excited to see, you know, excited to talk to my clients, excited to see who I'm going to connect with today because I'm always connecting with new people on Instagram. And it's just so fun to see women like, you know, with their Etsy pages, like doing incredible things with art. And, you know, just, it's just, I don't have that super creative part of me. So like being able to kind of live vicariously through some of my clients is really cool. <laughs> Yeah, I like um, all the things I get to learn from my clients. Many of my clients are coaches of various kinds, spiritual coaches. So I'm I'm learning how to get a good mindset and yeah. destroy limiting beliefs and improve my mood. And I'm just like, I I set this up so well. I get to learn <laughs> all this stuff from all these amazing people. <laughs> right? And it all goes so hand in hand. Like if you don't have a good mindset, like then you're not going to come to your business in a good place. And so it's so important to work on all of that. And man, what a privilege that you, mm -hmm. that your clients are in that space. So you guys just get to, <laughs> yeah, that was, see, that was very aligned. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> mindset. I've been amazed how important it is. You know, you hear mindset is everything. 80% is mindset. Yeah. Um, you know, I tend to be a more like grounded, practical numbers. And then it's like, oh, the the mind is actually the most critical part. It really yeah. is. Yeah. If, yeah. If you're not if, if you're not taking care of your mindset and your mental health, um, just everything else is just going to feel not good. <laughs> you know, it's going to feel again, you can get into that dreadful stage or even just, it just feels really difficult and hard. And then, you know, just ha being in the right mindset and working on your beliefs. And I know for me, I always talk about trusting. I have a lot of clients that their part of their issue is imposter syndrome, overcoming imposter mm -hmm. syndrome. And I always just tell them that that starts with your confidence and trusting yourself. And that's little things, you know, like telling yourself you're going to wake up five minutes earlier every day and actually doing it like that's just going to be a stepping stone to over overcoming the bigger issue of imposter syndrome. Um, but that's just a little mindset hack, you know, like if, if you're, you just have to make one tiny small commitment to yourself as just a stepping stone. And that's like, can just be the, the, the start of like a huge mindset transformation. Whoa, sorry. Oh my gosh. My watch just hit my table. <laughs> Mindset transformation is what I was trying to say. <laughs> I'm curious to know how you got started doing what you're doing now. Yeah. So I, I actually had someone ask me the other day, how long have you been a coach? And I was like, technically like all my life. <laughs> yeah, um, it's all to <laughs> yeah. It's like, I've pretty much always led people or coached people or helped people in some way. But, um, what started it for me, I went to a, um, a business retreat last year with the intention of learning how to grow my Instagram account to be a Disney blogger for Disneyland. That was okay. that was my goal. Um, and I ended up realizing that my true passion is to create a community of women 
um, that empowered one another. And, you know, I could show them that they felt seen and supported and heard. Um, and I've always known that my purpose was to change people's lives. Like literally since I was 12, I've known that, but I didn't know what that looked like exactly. Um, and so I just kind of started, you know, sharing on Instagram about my personal life journeys with um, single motherhood. I've been a single mom for nine years now. Um, so just sharing that. And I just slowly started attracting women who wanted guidance, wanted help of some kind. And I kind of started as a life coach. Um, mm -hmm. And then I realized everyone I was talking to, I was helping them with business related things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've had businesses in the past. I've had failed businesses. I've had successful businesses. I've helped people, you know, grow their businesses more. So I realized, you know, I can really help people like get on the right track in their business. And it's what I had started doing like accidentally almost, I want to say. <laughs> and I had my friend, I was like talking on Instagram one day to my community and saying, um, like, you know, that my, my gift is to help you see your gifts so that your business can, you know, be exactly what you want it to be. And, um, this was before I officially transitioned into a business coach. And my best friend was like, Hannah, like you're a business coach. I know you're not calling yourself a business coach, but everything you're doing is business. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> I think that's something that people undervalue is really good quality friendships. Um, or just, or just having people around you that see your gifts, you know, and see your talent and your potential. And sometimes it just takes an outsider, you know, when you're too yeah. close to your thing, it takes an outsider. I, you, I say all the time, like we, we dismiss our own gifts because yeah. to us, it comes easy. We just think, that everybody thinks that's easy. Yeah. That, yep. that was a big start of my journey was realizing that not everyone found funnel building really easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is not my gift. <laughs> funnel building <laughs> is not a gift for me, but for, for, you know, for you, for some people it is. And so you have to, you know, you want to put yourself in a position where people can see that and can kind of call you out in a way. Like when she was telling me this, I was like, Oh yeah, I didn't, I guess I didn't really think about it that way, but you're right. And it's been so fun just to, you know, really hone down and, you know, really focus on business now. Whereas, you know, I liked what I was doing, but I was always like secretly kind of hoping that my clients were going to come to me for a business related thing. And so now I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> like this is it. <laughs> Let's go. Do you feel like a lot of aligned businesses kind of start that way where it's almost accidental and because you're attracting people that want a particular thing and yeah. that's sort of secretly cluing you in that that's something yeah. that's aligned with you. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, you don't realize your gifts. And so when um, the, the aligned business part of it definitely it just happens in conversation. So, you know, I start asking questions about like, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? Like right now, if, if you know, I gave you a million dollars today like what would you go do for work but like was fun you know um you never know how to answer just, questions <laughs> but it, it's it's like you have to find the things that um that just come naturally to you and you can only do that through just being curious and asking questions or answering questions you know in, in my case with my clients um and then that way you get to the point of where it's like oh I'm really good at this and other people aren't really good at this and people will pay a lot of money for this and I get to do this and get paid for it. Like, how does that happen? But okay. Like I'm not saying no. <laughs> and it helps really with the imposter good. syndrome when you find something that you're like, I'm good at this. And yeah. You get the confidence. Yes. I know. Like the, the amount of times that my clients will say something like, Oh, I never thought about it that way. And I'm like, you didn't. Um, uh, I'm like, okay, cool. Well, like, let's run with that. Like, <laughs> now, now start thinking about it that way. And, you know, then you can, you can find your gifts there and find your passion and go make money doing it. Because that's, life is just way too short to like, not enjoy your life, you know, to wake up every morning, like, dreadful of your work or your business or your job or whatever. Like, that's just no way to live. Do you think most of your clients come to you when they're already trying to do their own business, but it's not a good match or they're like in a corporate job and they're sort of dreaming about starting a business? Um, most of my clients have been people that already have 
some sort of business started. Um, I haven't had anyone that's like, I, get me out of this job. Like, I hate this. <laughs> um, most people have like, um, like my photography client who she was doing this one type of photography, didn't like it. I've had people that, you know, are in the very beginning stages of their business and they feel like, I know this is what I want to do, but I don't know how to actually like grow it or do it. Um, yeah. I've had people that have had a decent amount of like success, but they just, they want to expand or maybe they want to pivot a little bit to something a little bit different, but kind of related. Um, so definitely like the beginner stages, but sometimes, sometimes it's the beginning stage where they're just like pivoting completely too. Um, and sorry, <laughs> someone tried coming. In. Um, oh, Oh, no. There you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry about that, guys. We're a very casual podcast. My kids. Are <laughs> I'm glad. I I live, in, I live in Southern California, so it's very expensive here. So my office is in my garage, but <laughs> I put up this nice little curtain so you don't see my garage. Anyway, yeah, having um, a garage in Southern California is pretty awesome. I, that is actually a, that's a really good point. A lot of people yeah. don't even have garages. <laughs> I lived yeah. in Los Angeles for a few years. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> not, not necessarily oh something God. everyone has. <laughs> this is true, you know. And we're also blessed with AC too. It's warm mm. this weekend, and we have a air conditioning unit, which is also very unusual. So <laughs> thankful for that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I don't remember exactly what I was talking about, but it's fine. <laughs> well, let me ask another question then. Sure. <laughs> what is the process of someone who wants to get started working with you? What's the first step that they take? Yeah, the first step I offer, if you know for sure that you just want to work with me, um, we can go right into a one-on-one um, -on -one coaching container. I also do 30-minute um, like clarity calls, so to speak, where we can kind of get an idea of like, what's your idea or where are you at right now? And where do you want to go? Um, I'm confident I can help just about anybody get wherever they want to go. But you know, sometimes people like I understand you want to just get a feel for what it's like working together. So we'll work through a couple things. Um, and then go from there either, you know, work further or I can recommend someone else to um, mm -hmm. I'm all about just empowering women like I want you to do whatever is best for you. And so if that's working with me, great. If you can't, you know, if you can't do it right now, or if you want to work with someone else, like that's fine too. But I just want, I just really want more female business owners out there. <laughs> so whatever I can do to get you started, you know, hopefully you'll come back to me because I love seeing the transformation that people have. I love having mm -hmm. the like backseat. Um, but yeah, so start with the 30 minute call or just go right into coaching. And um, coming up soon, I am going to be doing a group coaching program that I'm building currently because I think there's power in working, like having multiple people working together. Mm. Um, so we'll see where that we'll see where that goes. I haven't finalized the details of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So last question. What is a tip that you would give for people to know whether looking for a business coach is a good next step for them? That's a really good question. I think if you are feeling stuck in your business, like you don't know what direction you want to go, that's a good point to get a business coach. If you're feeling imposter syndrome of some kind, like you really want to do this, but you have your beliefs telling you, I'm not qualified, who's going to pay me? Um, that's a good time to find someone. Or if you're looking to scale, like if you've like plateaued at like, okay, I can only book this many clients consistently. Like what's wrong? Like what do I need to overcome? Um, that's another really good time too, because we just, you know, half of the time, it's just that you're too close to your business. You're too invested and you just need someone who's going to be honest with you and give you a little kick on the butt and maybe inspire you or give you a new idea. But, um, most of the time we're just too close to it. So anytime that you're wanting a shift or a change, whether that's, you know, pivoting sideways or just growing, um, that's a, that's always a good time to get a coach. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, you sent over your Instagram handles. We've got that in the show notes and that awesome. is the best place for people to connect with you. You said yes. they can send you a DM if they want to 
get started or learn more? Yep. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a link in my bio too for my coaching. Um, but I don't remember exactly. I have a few links. So <laughs> definitely DMs always good. Just like, Hey, I'd love to book a 30 minute call with you, you know, and, and mm -hmm. we can schedule that. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Any last things that you would like to impart to the audience? Um, no, just, you know, if you're inspired at all to, uh, to, you know, make a change in your business or grow it or start something completely new, like, I think, I think we just need to go for it. I think we just need to take those, you know, scary steps for ourselves. <laughs> Life more is often. Short, as they say, just do it. <laughs> exactly. Just do it. Like, you know, if something feels right, if something feels good, like just go for it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you right. so much Thank for having you. me on, Carolyn, though. This was so fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We will say goodbye then. Bye. <laughs>